Gluten is a protein found in wheat products and more and more people are becoming intolerant to it. It's essentially a binder that creates the structure that you find in baked goods. So when you chew into a baguette and you see all those big bubbles and that amazing sort of elasticity, that is gluten working. And there are a couple of tricks in gluten-free baking that make it really easy and accessible to do today. Any quick bread is a great starter recipe into gluten-free baking. I'm taking my mom's banana bread and turning it into a gluten-free recipe. It works really well because of the texture of quick breads. It's a little bit denser. And so something with gluten-free where you don't really get all of that elasticity in the large bubbles, muffins, quick breads, that kind of thing are perfect with gluten-free baking. So the first thing to my mom's banana bread is a little bit funny. I'm adding vinegar to milk. And the idea here is when you add vinegar to milk, it curdles the milk slightly. So what you end up getting are really rich, little dense milk curds and a little bit of a tang and it adds so much to the banana bread. So that is a holdover from my mom's recipe. Next, I'm going to combine all of my dry ingredients. And the start here is I have gluten-free flour. I have just a really generic kind of all-purpose gluten-free flour. There's a combination of fava bean flour, garbanzo bean flour, and a lot of other fun stuff that makes this a really good sort of all-purpose gluten-free flour. Once you have the combination of flours down, that's basically it. This is just my mom's banana bread recipe. So all I changed was I'm using gluten-free flour instead of regular flour. Great, and that's two cups. Gluten is something that is not only exclusive to wheat products. You can find gluten in all kinds of prepackaged foods all over the grocery store. So make sure to read your labels. Next, I'm going to add xanthan gum. And xanthan gum acts as a binder for any gluten-free flour. So you always need to have xanthan gum in a gluten-free recipe. Next, I'm going to add baking soda. And this gives a lift to the banana bread. And of course, a little bit of salt because it adds a lot of great flavor. Now I'm gonna sift all of my ingredients together to make sure they're evenly distributed. So my dry ingredients are ready to go. I'm gonna get started with mashing up my bananas. There's a couple of techniques, a couple of schools of thought when it comes to banana smashing. You can do it with the back of a fork and a bowl, but my technique for smashing bananas is just taking the peeled bananas, sticking them in a freezer bag, and mushing it with my fingers. It's great, no cleanup and really easy. And I wanna end up with about three cups of mashed bananas. So that's about five whole bananas. The reason why I'm mushing bananas rather than just sticking them in a food processor or blender and blending them until they're a puree is I want those little clumps of banana. They add so much flavor when you slice it. Well, this looks sufficiently mashed to me, so these are ready to go. All of my ingredients are ready, so now I just have to stick it in the mixer and it's ready to bake. Now I'm gonna cream together my butter, sugar, and eggs. And this is super traditional baking. This is the base of almost any cake. First goes in my softened butter. And next, my sugar. And you just mix it until it's really nice and creamed together. You want a consistent texture, almost like you're making frosting. Okay, well, that looks great. So now that my butter and sugar are perfectly creamed together, I'm gonna add one egg at a time. That looks great. It's fully incorporated. So now the second egg. Well, that looks beautiful. It's really shiny and all one color. So now I'm gonna add my dry and wet ingredients, alternating back and forth. So I'm gonna start with my dry. So you wanna keep it on low and you don't wanna overbeat it because that'll create a denser bread. So now I'm gonna add a little bit of my wet, my curdled milk. The last bit of dry going in. And now the last of my milk. And we're good. So now I get to do all of my fun add-ins. I'm doing walnuts and chocolate chips because those are my classic favorites, but feel free to add any other kind of nuts or add-ins you like. So now I'm going to roughly chop my walnuts and I like to keep them in larger pieces because I like getting these little clusters of walnuts. Great, that seems fine. I just want to break down the whole walnuts in halves. So now I'm going to just add that to my mixer. 
Now I'm going to add my bananas. Great. I love it. My hands are not messy. It's a miracle. And next, I'm going to add my chocolate chips. And for a finishing touch, I'm gonna to add vanilla extract. I love the flavor of vanilla in anything baked, so I always add a little bit. So now I'm gonna pour my batter into a loaf pan, but I love making these into muffins for breakfast too, so you can use it in kind of any pan you like. Great, that looks beautiful. Now to stick it in the oven. It's been in for about 45 minutes at 350 degrees, and my banana bread is a beautiful golden brown. Now I'll set this aside to cool. So my banana bread is cooled, and the way I could tell it was done was the bounce back test. If you press into a baked good and it gives back, it's done. So I'm gonna have a taste of my bread, and I'm first gonna take it out of my loaf pan. Wow, look at that. And so now I'm gonna slice some of it up and enjoy it with some butter and honey. That just took it over the edge. That is so, so delicious. Oh my gosh. The great thing about this banana bread is I like to make it for my friends who are a little bit suspicious of gluten-free baking. I make it for them without telling them and they love it anyway. So it's a perfect starter for gluten-free baking.